I'm Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'll demonstrate how to use the foliage brush pack I created for Photoshop and Adobe Fresco. This is a collection of 15 brushes. I have them loaded here in Photoshop, and I'll go ahead and show you how each of these brushes works. Let's start with Distant Trees. I'm going to sample this background color, and just make it a little bit darker and a little bit more saturated, maybe a tiny bit more blue. And if I paint with this brush, you can see I can add these soft, distant trees. These are going to be really far away in the background. If I want the trees to look closer, I'll make them bigger, or I can make them very small and clumped together like this to make them look much farther away. And I'll do more treetops here, but I'm just kind of scribbling with this brush and letting this brush do the work for me. So I can fill in this whole bottom area here like this. I could create another new layer, shift it a little bit more toward indigo, make it a little bit more saturated, a little bit darker, and the darker you make it, the closer it's going to look. So I can paint in some closer trees like this, fill in the bottom, and I could continue adding as many layers as I want to to create some depth here in this painting. Each time you move into the foreground, you're going to want to make your trees noticeably bigger so that it looks like there's a sense of scale going on there. I'm going to take all these tree layers and just move them up a bit. The next brush that we'll use is called Grass Rotation. The rotation implies that if you're using the Wacom Art Pen and your pen supports rotation, you can rotate the dab like this. I'm going to go ahead and choose a nice greenish color here. I'll paint a test stroke. That grass is going to be much too big, so I'm going to make my brush smaller using the left bracket key. Something like that works better. And then I can rotate this brush so I can have the grass go at an angle, any kind of angle that I want, just by rotating my brush. So what I'll do is I'll just put in some grass here. Now you could make your brush larger by hitting the right bracket key and have the grass get larger as you move into the foreground. That gives a nice sense of scale. Let's create a layer underneath that. I'm going to select wet fan foliage up. I want to sample the color that I'm using here for the nearest trees in the background. I just want to make sure the color that I choose is darker than that. I'll do a test stroke and you can see that the leaves kind of point up on this brush. If I use light pressure, then I get small leaves. If I use heavy pressure, then I get bigger leaves. And I can, and if I create the right kind of marks here, I can create pine trees. So I'm just using lighter pressure up toward the top. Now I'm getting these really nice pine tree effects. You could also have bushes that go along the ground like this. There's also wet fan foliage down, which is a similar brush that has leaves that point down. So you could have some trees like this that are a different type of tree. I'll create a layer above that, and I'll just use one of the default Photoshop brushes called Soft Round Pressure Size. I'll select a grayish color and I'll use that to put in some tree trunks. Now we can add some detail to those trees. I'm going to go ahead and lock the transparency of that layer. And I'll use a blue-green color like this just to add some detail make that a bit brighter if you want that detail to stand out more. These are still kind of far away so we don't need too much detail. We could have the bushes be a different color. And these other trees we created using wet fan foliage down so we'll switch to that. Maybe these can have some leaves that are a bit brighter. So we'll just tap those on. Make it just a bit brighter. Maybe even put in some yellowish spots here and there on a couple of the trees. So I'm going to create another layer between the trunks and the grass. Let's try bushy dabs. I'm going to make my color quite a bit darker here. I'll do some bushy dabs up here in the sky first. And you can see I get this nice bushy texture. If I put in some down here at the bottom, you can see this brush works really well to give me some ground cover. And then again, I can select a color that's a bit lighter and put some details in on top of that. Next is dry foliage dabs. I can tap with this and kind of build up these interesting dab shapes. If I use lighter pressure, then I get dabs that are a bit more transparent. And as I start to increase pen pressure, they become more opaque. So I can create stuff that looks a little bit more distant with lighter pressure and stuff that looks closer with heavier pressure and everything in between. The next brush is Fan Pines Down. This creates pine trees with branches that hang down. So if I paint with this brush, I can create this row of pine trees like this. 
I can also pull straight down like this to create bigger pine trees. And then of course you'd want to add trunks to these. The next brush is grass thick. I'll go ahead and put some thick grass here in the sky. This gives you a different style of grass that's a bit more wild and messy. Now I can also select grass thin, select a lighter green color, and then I can just sprinkle some highlights on top of that with the thinner grass. The next brush is Impressionist Leaves. I can use this to create leaves in sort of an Impressionist style by creating a bunch of little brush dabs. And of course I could put midtones and highlights over that as well, and the paint blends in kind of a nice painterly way. Next is Leaf Clumps. If I wanted to create some distant pine trees that look kind of like this, I could use Leaf Clumps for that. If you use lighter pressure, you get smaller clumps. Heavier pressure gives you bigger clumps of leaves. So if you do kind of a tapered stroke like this, you can get pine trees, or you could just build it up and create little bushes like so. Next is Sharp Leaves. Sharp Leaves gives you these sharp holly bush style leaves. You can use lighter pressure to get leaves that are more distant or more transparent looking. And if you use heavier pressure, then you can build these up in layers like so. Next is Smashed Dab Foliage. I'll go ahead and tap in one place a few times and kind of build this up to create foliage that looks like you just smashed a big brush on the canvas to create your tree. And of course, you could put a highlight color on top of that as well. Next is Spongy Foliage. Spongy Foliage gives you an interesting look. There's some negative space here in between the different branches, so it looks a little bit more wild and brambly. Put a bit of a highlight on top of that as well. And the last brush in this set is Wet Foliage Dabs. If I build up some strokes with this, you can see I get these dabs of foliage that look a little bit more wet. If I make my brush bigger, and those clumps are larger, and so the leaves appear to be larger or maybe closer. I can make my brush smaller. I can make my clumps closer together or maybe farther away. And I can put in some mid-tones and highlights on top of this as well. So there you go, that was a demonstration of how to use my foliage brush pack for Photoshop and Adobe Fresco. You can download these brushes from AaronRutten.com. And if you're interested in checking out some more of my brushes, I'll link you to some more brush demos at the end of this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.